Chapter Twenty Two. Psst! I, I might. Hissed Maud, gently shaking Basil through the heavy blankets. Wake up and see this. Maud, grinning from ear to ear, was witnessing a most glorious crimson sunrise melting over the rolling ocean. Oh, come on! Basil grumped. I've only just fallen asleep, you sod. I just opened one eye. Pleaded Maud. I beg you, quickly. Without getting the enthused response he wanted, Maud proceeded to pry open one of Basil's heavy eyelids. Hey! Basil snapped, slapping Maud's hand away from his face. Sod off! <laughs> so just look then. Maud snickered to himself. He was a cheeky bugger, and Basil was in no mood for his sly antics. I promise you, you won't regret it. And he was right. The view was spectacular. Letting out a belligerent sigh, <sighs> Basil rubbed his fingers deep into his swollen eyes and slowly sat up, pulling a pillow to his chest. Oh, you look like death, mate. Maud frowned at him. Oh. You think? Basil yawned, admiring Maud's maroon caftan. Nice style you got there. <laughs> I thought so too, mate. Maud nodded in earnest. I feel dashing. He smoothed his hands down the length of the fine fabric. Just enhances my good looks. His eyes fell out over the cerise rays upon the horizon. <sighs> if only I had a lovely woman to share this view with. He said drearily, oh, "You're sharing it with me, aren't you?" Basil muttered, raising an eyebrow. Maud shot him a mocking glance. Huh, "Wait a minute," he blurted out, placing a bemused finger on his chin. "There are plenty of lovely women here, and Serenade is my middle name." He gave Basil a greasy wink. Oh, "You are so full of yourself." Basil rolled his eyes with disgust. And threw the pillow over his face. One could now see the distinct splendor of Uncle Sargon's Alioth, dissolving within the magenta hues of the morn. The home spread ingeniously along many a sheer and sharp cliff top, was laden with tropical lushness that plummeted down to the depths of a warm ocean below. It was breathtaking. Basil sat there gazing out. Plagued by those extraordinary words of his uncle's all night long, he tossed and turned, weighted by the monstrosity of them, clouding his peace of mind. It was only due to his sheer exhaustion that he dozed off just before dawn, as if he just had a stark revelation. He immediately remembered the Arunasis medallion and anxiously searched for it on his chest. Relief washed over him when he found it under the nape of his neck. How did you sleep? He muttered, glancing at Maud, slumping himself back into the pillows. Oh, oh, like a baby, bellowed Maud, throwing his body across Basil's bed, resting his head on his hands. I've not slept this good since I was a kid. Oh, lucky you, mumbled Basil apathetically, shielding an arm over his tired eyes. I don't know if it's the bed. Maud smiled wryly. Or it's because I know I'm surrounded by jammy beauties. Control yourself, warned Basil protectively. Remember, they are my <clears throat> new cousins. Maud pointed out, interrupting quickly. <laughs> But you can't blame me for the fair observation, mate. Surely you see it. Of course, they're stunningly gorgeous. Basil muttered. But I'm politer about it. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Who is it? Basil called. Alden. Peace be upon your souls, gentlemen. He smiled from the doorway. Would you care to break fast now? Ah,、uh, no, no, not for me, thank you, Alden. Basil hollered, shunning the thought of food. He desperately wanted sleep. I'm all done, please, Alden. Maud nodded happily. Refresh yourself, and I will return to collect you momentarily. Bowed Alden, turning away, swiftly closing the door behind him. 
<laughs> I feel like a god with all this bowing and stuff. Maud laughed, resting his hands behind his head and crossing his legs over Basil's incredibly large bed. So, what did your Uncle Sargon have to say to you last night? No lie. Basil hadn't the faintest idea of how he would begin to tell Maud any of it. He decided it was best to blow it all off. Oh, you know, just about family history and stuff, bluffed Basil, snuggling deeper under the blankets. Yeah, okay. Maud nodded, immediately accepting the bluff. I just can't believe... Suddenly there was another knock at the door. It opened slowly, and there stood Sargon, regal and all, clad in a beautiful grey robe with a thin gold trimming. He appeared very well rested. Good morning, fine men, he greeted, flashing a beautifully bright smile, stepping down the stairway toward them. At once, Basil and Maud hurriedly sat up. The dawn of a new day has blessed us with ambrosia once again, he praised, gesturing with an extended arm toward the glorious sunrise. Indeed it has, replied Maud. Good morning, Sargon. Oh, good morning, Uncle, answered Basil, trying his best to appear enthusiastic. Sargon immediately sensed Basil was troubled. You have not slept, he voiced with concern, sitting on the edge of Basil's bed. No, Uncle. Basil shook his head slowly. At once, Sargon turned his head to the door. All done. Please bring me the sleep tonic. He then directed his attention to Maud. I would be most honoured if you would join me to breakfast this morning. Ah, oh, beauties at the breakfast table. Maud's mind drooled. I would love that, Sargon. Thank you. He answered politely, concealing his excitement. Meanwhile, Alden returned with a copper salver filled with several leafy stalks, small cork bottles, a clay pitcher of water, and some cloth pouches of powdered substances. He placed it on the bed beside Sargon and stepped away. Basil and Maud watched inquisitively as Sargon mashed some of the fresh green leaf with a mortar and pestle, and then with a tiny bronze spoon added several powders from the various pouches. This is a very old tonic for good relaxation, Sargon advised, pulling the cork from the two small bottles. He splashed a few drops of both into the granite mortar grinding it all together. <laughs> that looks, uh, hmm, um, mushy? Giggled Maud warily. <laughs> mushy, but magic. Sargon winked. He took the picture and poured water into the mixture, and then finally strained it through a bronze chinois. Drink this, he instructed, handing a wooden cup full of the green elixir to Basil. Without hesitation, Basil threw the mixture down his throat quickly. <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, that was frightful. Sweet like honey. Sargon joked. <laughs> <laughs> they all burst out laughing, particularly Maud. Oh, you will sleep easy now. Sargon assured, patting Basil on the shoulder. Oh, I hope so, replied Basil, wiping his mouth. And Sargon was indeed correct. Basil began to feel the effects hit him immediately as it soaked through his delirious body. Thank you, Uncle. Sargon nodded with a tender smile. Come along, Maud. Let us leave Basil to rest. He placed an arm over Maud's lanky shoulder, and together they quietly wandered out of Basil's quarters with Alden following behind. Basil for a moment watched them until he could no longer hold his head up and quickly succumb to the dark depths of an imminent slumber.